Hi everybody, welcome to Best of British Blackwell. Today we're gonna to be cooking a lovely dish for you. I'm gonna be using some of the produce sent to me by Lamb to You. Details of the company down below. Don't forget, uh, if you wanna place an order with Lamb to You, they're doing a special promotion for Best of British Blackwell subscribers. You will get 15% off your order if you use the discount code best of british so thank you to lamb to you for one sending me the products and two sharing that discount with my subscribers what are we going to be making today i am going to be making a beautiful slow cooked shoulder of lamb using this lovely piece of meat here which is about 1.3 kilos um, as with all of the kind of product review videos that I do, I am going to tend to do a uh, more in-depth video like this one, going to take slightly longer, and then I'll show you a nice quick and easy video uh, using a completely different product. So come over, take a look at the ingredients, let's make a start. Okay, so the core ingredients for the lamb part of this dish is obviously this beautiful lamb shoulder. Now, there is a bone in here just running through the back end here. That's not gonna be a problem. We're gonna cook this so low and so slow for so long that all of this meat is gonna go like pulled lamb, shredded lamb. It's gonna be absolutely beautiful. Uh, the herbs that we're gonna be using for this, obviously some thyme goes fantastic with lamb and some rosemary. We're gonna be uh, just uh, rubbing that down into this lamb flesh. I'll show you that in a minute. And then as that starts to cook down, it's gonna release some beautiful juices, which we're gonna mix in with some, just some shop-bought lamb gravy that I've got here. Uh, you could make up your own uh, lamb gravy, not a problem at all, but I'm just adding this really easy um, pre-cooked stuff in there. And then um, the second part of the cook with the lamb, I'm gonna make a lovely trivet out of these beautiful carrots that I've got going spare here and I'm gonna put them on the tray and cook those down as well. I'm also gonna be making two different side dishes with this, which I'll show you as we progress, but let's prep this lamb up ready to go into the oven. Okay, so I've taken the lamb out of the packet and I'm just gonna give it a quick tap down with some kitchen paper, just to take off any extra excess moisture that's been inside that pack. The next step for me here is to get a very small roasting dish, doesn't need to be too big, and I'm gonna take yeah, about half of the thyme and just lay it on the bottom. Bit of the rosemary, create the first trivet that this lamb is gonna sit on. Then we're gonna infuse a little bit of oil into there, just so it doesn't stick or burn. And then we get that lamb straight in there. Now the lamb is in, that's when we go in with some salt and some pepper. Just start to build those flavor layers up. And then quite literally get the rest of our rosemary. There's a lot in here, don't worry about that. It's gonna cook for so long and so slow that these flavors are going to infuse. Just tuck them straight on the top. Now, a really good tip for you uh, sorry, just before that, we'll put a bit of oil over there as well. Now here comes the really good tip. When you cook lamb low and slow in the oven, you usually need to cover it. If you cover it directly with silver foil or aluminium foil, it will stick to the top of the lamb flesh. Now you don't want that. So what you do to prevent that is you get a piece of greaseproof paper. Just tuck that down first of all. And now we're just gonna cover this lamb over. That is pretty much it. This is gonna go into the oven now on 140, 140 degrees centigrade fan oven. I'll give you the uh, conversions down here uh, for other ovens, and that goes in for three hours. Okay, so we're gonna make a start on our first side to go with this, which is going to be a potato gratin. Um, nice and simple, uh, beautiful dish to have, uh, particularly with lamb, it's very creamy, very nice, and it's very simple. First things first, we're gonna get a nice big saucepan, and we're gonna to add to that good old glug of milk. There is two pints of milk in there. Then we're gonna get some easy garlic, straight into the milk. That was a teaspoon of easy garlic. You can use crushed garlic, you can even use garlic powder if you wanted to, but I've just used the easy kind. 
and then I've got some potatoes here, various sizes, it doesn't really matter. Then you get your potatoes here, and just use your mandolin to slice them straight into the milk, just being very careful not to leave your fingers in there to chop them up. Once all of your potatoes are sliced and diced, just make sure they're completely covered in the milk. Get your saucepan lid straight on, straight over to the heat. Bring them to the boil, let them simmer for five minutes and just soften these potatoes down. I'll show you the next stage next. The next stage of our gratin is, is just as simple. I always find that leeks cook down into a beautiful sweet taste and they go lovely with creamy potatoes. So I've got a couple of decent sized leeks here. We're just gonna trim off the tops. We're not gonna use these. You could use these to make some stock, but I tend to just throw them away. Uh, just trim off the bottoms. And all we wanna do, cut these along the middle. And we want to relatively thinly slice these down. They don't need to be too thin, but you're looking for about that. Then what we'll do with these is take these over to a pan and sweat them down. Okay, so we have prepared all the different elements of the gratin dish, and now we're gonna to start to put this together. And it's very, very simple. All you need around you are your sauteed off leeks. We've got our potatoes here, which we've strained off, but I've kept the leftover milk um, juices that we used. I'll just put this to one side. We're not gonna use all of that, but we're gonna use some of that in this gratin dish. We've also got a lot of grated Gruyere cheese here. You can use other cheeses, Gruyere works really well in this dish. You're also gonna need some salt and some pepper. Now, using a gratin dish or a skillet would be ideal, but actually just using a basic Pyrex dish like this is gonna be just fine. The first thing that we're gonna do, nice clean hands, we're just gonna start off getting our potatoes, which have been softened beautifully in that milk, and make a nice layer of potato on the very bottom of the dish. Once you've got that bottom layer in place like that, as you can see, there's a little bit of garlic in there because we've got that lazy garlic in there. Just season. And because this is the bottom of the dish and we want this to create quite a nice crust, we're gonna go with a second layer of potato. So we've got two nice layers of potato. Now we wanna get some of these lovely sweet leeks in there. And I'm just using my tongs to evenly distribute these out. Don't want too many. That's about perfect. Now we go back in with some salt and some pepper, making sure you build the layers of seasoning up. And then we get a nice layer of that lovely gratin cheese in there. And then what I'm also gonna do is get just a little bit, not too much, just a little bit of these milk juices. Just to add a little bit of moisture in there so they cook down a little bit more. And then we just need to keep going with that. It's layers upon layers upon layers. So again, we're back in with the potatoes. So here we go. We've built up our, built up our layers of leeks and potatoes. We've added a little bit of the juices that we cooked the potatoes in. I'm just gonna add a tiny little bit more now. The last thing you want is this dish drying out. If you add this milk nice and slowly over the top of the layers that you've created, it will just seep through the gaps and that's precisely what you're looking for here. You don't need a great deal of this. Of the two pints you've used uh, to cook the potatoes, I'm probably left with about, uh, about a pint and a half. So we're looking at about half a pint of the cooking juices that have gone in there. A little bit of salt over the top and a little bit of pepper. And now what we're gonna do is cover this over with some tin foil, get it in the oven for about 35 minutes. And then when we take it out of the oven after 35 minutes, I've got a little bit more Gruyere and some Parmesan cheese to sprinkle over the top and then send under the grill. Okay, so our lamb has been in the oven now for about three hours. Let's take a little look. 
Oh yes. So as you can see already, hopefully you can see this bit here, the meat has started to kind of contract a little bit and all of the kind of juices from the meat are just starting to pull at the bottom here. What we're going to do now is remove these herbs. They have served their purpose. Perfect, there we go. So most of the herbs are out. There's still a few little sprigs of rosemary and thyme in there, that doesn't matter at all. Now we're going to create a second trivet and this is a trivet of carrots. Uh, the reason we take the herbs out is because we are actually going to eat these carrots and you don't want them to be too heavily infused with the flavour of the herbs. Like I said, that's done its job now. Now what we're going to do is get that lamb back on top of that trivet. Now we're going to come over with our uh, shop bought gravy, like I said you can make your own. Just pour that straight over the top of this lamb. Look at that, that's going to be absolutely beautiful. Let me take this to one side. With the same covering, straight over the top. I placed another little bit of foil over the side just to keep a nice seal on there. Now we're going to go back in the oven for another couple of hours. Okay, so we've taken our lamb out of the oven. As you can see, we've got this beautiful gravy around the outside and these lovely carrots which are just softening up now beautifully. Let's put a little temperature probe in here just to see what temperature we're at. And as you can see there, we're well above that 77 degrees which means that our lamb is cooked. But as you can see, this uh, skin on the top here is still a little bit soft. So what we're going to do now is grab a spoon, get a little bit of this sauce and just start to baste it over the top. This is going to go back in the oven now and over the next 20 to 30 minutes we're just going to baste it every five minutes or so. Okay, so our cauliflower dish really couldn't be simpler. We're going to take a fresh cauliflower. I'm just going to get a small sharp knife. I've cut away all of the outer leaves of the cauliflower. Some people cook with those, I'm not too keen on them. And just with a short sharp knife, I cut in a circular motion all the way around the stem of the cauliflower just to be able to lift the inside of the cauliflower out. Now, you don't want to go down any deeper than that. Take away the remaining outside leaves, but actually that inner core is going to hold this cauliflower together. That's what we want because we're going to roast this cauliflower completely whole. Little trick for you, most people tend to put the cauliflower straight down like that and roast it. That's absolutely fine, but that means that the uh, outer side of the cauliflower gets cooked really nicely, but the inside doesn't. Very quick uh, tip for you, just to make sure that you get decent cooking throughout, is to just drizzle some oil on the inside. This is olive oil on the inside of the cauliflower. You'll tend to find that that sinks in between the cutlets of cauliflower here. Get a little bit of seasoning in there. And I always find that these cauliflowers cook a lot better if I put a little bit of oil on the inside. Turn it back over. Yes, a lot of that oil that you've just put in there is gonna run away, not a problem at all. Let's throw these away. Now we're gonna go in with some more oil. Cauliflower can be very bland if you roast it with no seasoning. The other mistake that people make is they season it without adding some form of oil or something just to make the seasoning stick. You need plenty of oil. Most of this oil is going to run off of this vegetable. So there is quite a bit of wastage on here, but don't worry. So don't use too expensive a virgin olive oil or anything like that. Just use basic olive oil. Give it a good covering so that you can see the whole thing glisten. That's when you know it's covered in oil. And then watch this. This is a medium curry mix, nothing too spicy. Just dust this cauliflower with a little bit of this and you will see it sticks to pretty much the whole cauliflower. That's enough of that, not too much because the other spice that we're gonna go in with is, in, is some harissa spice. This is a Moroccan spice, North African spice, really beautiful, works with cauliflower, an absolute treat. 
just give that a cover and that is it that is going to go into the oven on about 200 degrees for the next 20 minutes which means that our lamb our gratin and our cauliflower should all be ready at the same time so the gratin has now come out of the oven that has had 30 minutes we're going to take this off again i love my new trick about the greaseproof paper stopping things sticking that's lovely this is piping hot all i'm going to do now to finish this off is get some more gruyere over the top this is just the remainder of the gruyere that we had from the layering process not a great deal because there's a lot in that dish already then we get some parmesan going to break this up just to make a slightly subtle difference different taste to this cheese just something a little bit more salty just a little bit of a different flavor profile a bit more salt over the top a little bit more pepper and now we're going to put this under the grill for about two or three minutes until it's beautifully brown okay so the first thing that we're going to have to plate up here is this beautiful potato gratin just check that out from here you can see hopefully the beautiful layers of potato creamy potato leeks and cheese running through there and then on the top we've got that beautiful parmesan and some gruyere that's going to be absolutely lovely we're going to let that stand for just a minute because it is piping hot and we want it just to kind of set a little bit actually next thing we're going to do is take our lamb out and let that rest that's incredibly important as part of that dish okay so the lamb is out of the oven now take a look at that i have let this rest for 10 minutes all i want to do with this really is get a very basic knife and fork in there and see how this meat just tears away from this shoulder bone it really is that so, i mean look at this not making too much effort in here i'm just tearing this meat away from this uh, bone joint which you can see in here which is a shoulder bone it really is that simple also what we've got in here are these beautiful carrots which have been roasted and seeped in this beautiful lamb juice and lamb gravy that we've got in here i'm going to continue to just flake this meat apart and remove the rest of this bone i've got myself served up a lovely plate of uh, potato gratin there then we're going to serve up the cauliflower it's going to look absolutely beautiful okay so here is our roasted cauliflower nothing special about this really look how simple it was to make olive oil seasoning take a nice sharp knife look at that hardly any cutting at all so you've got your beautiful cauliflower in the middle that's been kind of steamed and low baked to a beautiful texture and then you've got this lovely seasoned outside absolutely beautiful lovely way to do a bit of cauliflower and very different let's move it to one side a little bit hot move it to one side and serve it up on our plate with some of our potato gratin just a little bit more there then we'll take this cauliflower to one side and then just look at this that lamb has been flaked apart with a couple of forks no doubt you have had pulled beef and you have had pulled pork but you have not lived until you have had a pulled shoulder of lamb look at that that's been pulled apart steeped in that gravy you've got some lovely hopefully you can see some lovely crunchy bits of skin on there some beautiful sweet carrots that have only just taken on the juice of all of that gravy a few more carrots a few more crunchy bits of skin there which we've got that's absolutely beautiful and there we have it let me take this to one side and give you a nice close-up of this so there we go this is a slow cooked shoulder of lamb from our friends at lambtoyou.co.uk with gratin potatoes which is made with gruyere and uh, leeks 
and some beautiful harissa spiced uh, roasted cauliflower. Absolutely superb. Let's have a little go. Wowie. All of those flavors are exactly what you're looking for. When it comes to a bit of lamb, you want it to be sweet, you want it to be tender, you don't want it to be tough. That is exactly that. Because the lamb uh, shoulder or shoulder of lamb is a relatively well-worked piece of meat, it's gonna be tough if you don't cook it for long enough. So that's why it's very important that you cook it low and slow and preferably in some form of gravy or juice because it will steam itself through. That is beautiful. It is just as good as pulled beef or pulled pork, probably even better. That cauliflower with the beautiful harissa spices on there is something completely different to the palate. Um, and it's probably my favorite way of cooking any vegetable at the moment. And a potato gratin is as kind of classic as it comes. I am really, really impressed with the produce that I'm getting at the moment from lambtou.co.uk. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for the next one.